In one of our recent outings with the camera crew, we passed an elderly lady sitting next to a tree on the sidewalk, selling an array of sweet items. What disturbed us was her constant nodding at her tree, telling us she was obviously fast asleep. Why would a lady of her age have to be seated at the side of the road, still trying to make a living to feed herself? Fortunately, she was still able to take care of herself, unlike many of the senior citizens in this country. Hi, I'm Monika McCoy, sitting in for Shane Cherry. Welcome to another episode of Solutions. Answers from the people. Simple solutions offered by St. Lucians. It is not uncommon to find elderly citizens of this country struggling to make a living to feed themselves in their later years, when they should be at home relaxing and enjoying grandchildren with no worries in their lives. So we ask the people, what is your solution to improve care and consideration for elderly citizens? Let's hit the streets and hear what the people had to see. A lot of things are based upon, one, first of all, are those persons really God-fearing persons? Because if they are God-fearing persons, then they treat persons as the way they want to be treated. Because the elderly, I mean, you know, people say once a, once a man, twice a child. So they behave like children when they're a particular age. But the main point is that they need to, to be sensitive about the way that they have to be treated themselves because they, we're, going to be, we're going to be old soon, okay? And if we want to be treated that way when we're older, because some people say, I, I don't want to even be old, I want to die now, you understand, before I get old and be treated the way that I'm treating somebody else. I, I personally think uh, um, to take care of old people, that's something you need people who really care about people, you understand? And put them in a home, you need people that will actually do something, take care of them properly. If you're going to do it yourself, you make sure you get it done, the, the, the job done properly. And I think the government should do more to at least assist these people because these people contribute already to the country. They should take a good care with the um, elderly people at all time. They cannot come go, go and drop them there and leave them alone. Even though they pay, is your mother, is your family. They have to take care of them very good. You understand? That's not so good to hear that. I, I really don't know because this is like a worldwide crisis of elderly going into homes and they're not taking care of them. I guess we've lost our family. It's only family that can make this happen. You have to have family to take care of the elderly. If not, that's what happens. They end up in homes. So my suggestion is we got to get our family community back and take care of our elderly because obviously we're paying money and it's not getting done. I think um, the private sector themselves should look into um, um, getting some of the homes and they shouldn't have left it for government. I self had my dad who passed on like two months ago and um, it's, he was pretty blessed that all his kids were in to help him but it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work taking care of a sick person, an elderly person. So I believe um, for one um, people with the money in the private sector, sector should look into investing in homes and provide primary care for the, for the elderly. That's, that's one of the things I believe should be done. Yeah? One of the things that I, can, I think that can be done is, number one, the government should put legislation in place right, to, to make sure that these people are protected. Right? Some of the time they're saying that they have legislation in place, but they don't follow what they, they put in place.
These are just some of the solutions from the people. We'll take a break now. When we come back, more solutions. Welcome back to Solutions. We ask the people for a solution to improve care and consideration for elderly citizens. Well, first of all, we have to remember elderly have also been parents, and they are still parents of some people. Now, in the first instance, I would say um, family members need to care more for their elderly. Point one, all right? And if you're going to chuck your family into a home, you need to investigate the home and you need to pay more attention to what's happening to your family, to your elderly family in the home. If you just chuck your family into the home, it just it simply says that you don't care. All right, and anything else that happens to them in that home is basically partly your fault. I don't know, I think what we need as a society, we have lost the compassion and the humanness in us. And that's what it is. And society now is driven by is driven by what people can achieve. So if, if, if I am working now and I can make a contribution to society, then I will be accepted in society. But at any point in time, if I am not able to work and function, then I'm considered useless. And, and that is the danger that we face. That was our first set of solutions. Let's go to our next question. Over the last few years, we have recorded some dismal results in CXC math and English. In an age when access to information to give students an upper hand and make teachers work easier, we find students are failing and doing worse than in an age where students had fewer resources. We ask the people, what is your solution to improve math and English scores? Let's go to the streets. Well, the, fir the first thing I would like to say is that um, math is a very important subject. It's a very interesting subject. And the, the fact of the matter is that um, people have not actually explained to students the importance of mathematics. All right? We have um, introduced so much technology that kids don't really see the necessity of, of doing mathematics. Um, where you say practically, they do it technologically. You understand? So students always have this, this um, mind frame that they could do maths on a piece of equipment. However, 
The stigma about mathematics is that, you know, it's a lot of numbers. Numbers are equally to words or letters. You understand? And we, we keep making numbers a difficult subject whilst we, we make letters a very easy subject. And I think, you know, if we, if we try to explain to, um, to, to young people or, or students that letters and numbers are equally, are equally framed, that they will understand that mathematics, which is one, two, three and four, is just as A, B, C and D. I think basically it's the whole general approach starting from the parents if they speak positively about mathematics and English and especially with English encouraging the kids to read and also the teachers approach from the primary schools um, if they do have a love for mathematics and some don't some do they have to try to instill it in the kids and with that they they will have a better approach or better overall attitude towards mathematics and it will improve. No, I'm not sure, but I would say that it has to do with your, your parents taking the time as early as possible to actually teach the, the children, you know, math. Because I think there's a lot of confusion when it comes to, to processing that sometimes. So I think it has a lot to do with the parents taking the time to, to spend time with the kids from small and teaching them the different individual subjects. Mathematics is strict, it's factual, there are a set of rules that you obey. I think one of our problems is that we don't like to obey rules that have been set for us and we like to question everything. If we just stop questioning math and just follow the rules, we would find it easier to learn as long as we get in the habit of practicing the rules. So it may be stemming from our desire to avoid adherence to basic rules. So get them to obey the math rules and they'll be fine. Somebody, even though generally, even across the Caribbean, um, we're not doing well in maths, there are schools in St. Lucia that are doing very well, um, especially at the secondary school level. And I speak um, about the St. Joseph's Convent, St. Mary's College, and even Leon Hess, where they have a pass rate of 90% of and above. As a matter of fact, um, Hess, at least two years ago, had a pass rate of about 94%. And what they are doing is instituting programs, including free lessons, according to the principal at SMC, um, um, where students are mandated to attend lessons and they are taken through their paces, including, as I said earlier, practicing maths. Um, some schools, let's say con convent for instance, they start, they do all the basics from forms one to three before they focus on CXC, whereas in other schools they focus on CXC from the beginning. So these are strategies that schools have deliberately um, set up in order to deal with the maths problem. Okay, well, um, I believe that additional lessons, you know, so would greatly help them improve. Yeah, because I believe that maths is not something which is that difficult. Yeah, I mean, once the kids sit down and grab the concept, you know, of mathematics. And I believe also that the instructors have a big role to do in how students, you know, understand the maths concept, you know. And I think that with good instructors, you know, I think that so they'd be able to conquer maths, yeah. You know, yeah, I don't know what they can do to improve them in their maths, but from me, my standpoint, I never liked maths and I don't know what the reason was. So I think it's a trend. Nobody likes maths, but it's a subject we all have to do. More solutions coming up after this break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Solutions on Choice TV. We ask the people for a solution to improve math and English scores at CXC. I think math is difficult because they cannot understand it properly. They don't have a they need a better understanding of math. They should get more lessons on how to do math, how to reason it out and how to process it. If they cannot do that, they cannot do math. And you need math for almost everything in life. So you really need to do math. You have to try, and if you cannot get it, keep on trying, keep at it. But the main thing is to try and reason it out. If you can reason it, you can get it. Okay, well, generally coming into the concept of, of mathematics, when, when students hear about mathematics, generally it have a difficult concept to them. Because that's how, that's how it's portrayed normally. When everyone talks about math, math's hard, math difficult and whatnot. So what you have to do, maybe sit down with, sit down with your students or sit down with the people you have to, that want to partake in them kind of mathematical situations. 
them know, yes, it might, have, it might have some aspects of it that may be difficult in it when you have to work it out. But you still have to take things step by step. So you show them, you show them where maths comes from as a basis. You start with your addition, your subtraction, your division. You let them go into that, let them study that, let them go into that as easy as they can. And start to show them where maths actually coming from, from a standpoint, from a basis point. So when they go through that and they're coming up, they realize maybe mathematics may not be so difficult as people portray it to be, because you have to go into it. But when you go into a, when you start mathematics with a mindset that that's difficult, you make it difficult. All right, so when you, when you do that, you make it more difficult for yourself. Now, if you start it, you break it down for them, piece by piece, you start it up, then maybe we can go through it and say, like, okay, maybe it's not that hard after all for us to go and do that. Maybe we can do it bit by bit, and by the time you check, when you get the general concept of mathematics, you realize it's, uh, it's easier all in all.
That's all from the streets. Let's wrap up. Children in Japan start formal schooling at age 5. Between 5 and 8, they do no math, no science, no languages, no social studies, or no academics. For these three years, the focus is on values, education, manners, learning to play and work with other people. Yet, by the age of 15, math and science scores in Japan are some of the highest in the world. They start later, yet are better than us by age 15. No, it's not the rice and tea or sushi. It's the value placed on learning that is inculcated in children. The teaching approach of pedagogy most likely contributes to the student's success as well. Sometimes we just don't have it right. Take English, for example. In most schools in St. Lucia, English is taught as if it's the first language of the students. You can deny that a large number of students speak Quayol as their first language or some form of Quayolized English. Unless we use an ESL approach to teaching, we're not going to get mastery of the language. In Oriental philosophy, Shao is the virtue and primary duty of respect, care, and obedience of one's parents and ancestors. In the Shao Jing, Confucius writes, in serving his parents, a son reverses them in daily life. He makes them happy while he nourishes them. He takes anxious care of them in sickness. He shows great sorrow over their death, and he sacrifices to them with solemnity. And this is more than just blind loyalty to one's parents. The virtue of Shao is a display of benevolence and righteousness, generally applied to dealings with all elders. This virtue is emphasized in Confucian philosophy because devotion to one's parents was often associated with devotion to the state. It is now a law in China requiring all adult children to provide mental and financial support as well as life care to parents once they have reached the age of 60. How can we get that implemented here? That's it for today. If you have something to say, we want to hear. Look out for the Choice TV crew for a chance to present your solution to the country. Now, if you have a burning question you want us to ask the people, we can do that too. Send us an email with your hot burning issue at solution at choice39.tv. That's S-O-L-U-C-I-A-N at choice39.tv. Join us again next week for more solutions. Everyone that is a prison that is guilty, but we have a university center criminal.